In Pokemon games, you battle to become the very best trainer. But what if you didn't train them? Leveling up, evolving, can you ignore all of that and just become the very best? I decided to find out. This was my attempt to beat Pokemon without ever leveling up. On the surface, this seems like a standard 0 EXP mod, but modding my game? That makes it too easy. So for this challenge, I'm playing vanilla Pokemon Crystal with one rule. If I level up, I reset. Okay, so how do I not level up? To start, I don't fight any wild Pokemon and accidentally lose to my rival, who I named after the main villain of this challenge, EXP. Winning any battle infects my Pokemon with these deadly experience points, making them go from this to this. Look at the pain in their eyes. It has to be avoided. The problem is beating this game means winning a lot of battles, including this one. Doing this fight with just Totodile guarantees I level up. So I caught two more Pokemon and went into the fight. By switching everyone into battle before defeating a Pokemon, the experience gets split evenly. So instead of getting a deadly dose of EXP, Totodile gets one third of that, which is still a lot. Look, this isn't a great strategy, if you can even call it that. It basically makes my Pokemon single use, and it definitely won't work in the Pokemon League. But for now, it's all I can do. So one battle in, and I can't use Totodile anymore. That means I catch more Pokemon. Except then I accidentally triggered this battle, so Totodile levels up. And I reset. Attempt 2 went much better. I skillfully dodged the trainer and made it all the way to Violet City, where I walked right past the first gym and started catching Pokemon. I know, shocking. Before I can fight this gym leader or any other one, I need to prepare. And in this challenge, that means catching a full team of the strongest Pokemon I can find. Actually, maybe strongest isn't the right word, because the best thing I can catch right now is a level 6 Pidgey. That's only one level above the Totodile I got an hour ago. At least since they're weak, catching them will be easy, right? Wrong. You know why? I'm broke. Trainer battles are my only source of money right now, but fighting them means spending money on Pokeballs to refresh my team. It's like that old saying. You have to spend money to make money, except I'm spending thousands in exchange for this kid's lunch money. Since money is so tight, I need every Pokeball to work, or I'm basically softlocked. That means every Pidgey I catch should be at low health to maximize the odds, and I got a high roll and killed it. We got so close to leveling up there, oh my god. Just for accidentally killing a wild Pokemon. Somehow I didn't reset, and now I have a full team of Pidgeys. Did I mention they all know Sand Attack? Yeah, I'm gonna spam that. Even with my toxic strats and meticulous planning, this battle was really close. But against all odds, I beat Faulkner, got the first badge, and saved the game. Yeah, resetting to the start of the game every time I level up would be, uh, hell. So after each gym leader, I could save the game and reset back to that point instead. With my whole team basically 1 EXP from leveling, I put everyone in the box, caught some new Pokemon, and repeated the cycle, until the second gym, where instead of Pidgeys, I could fish for some Goldeens and peck my way through these bug types. This marks the end of the easy part of this challenge. I didn't know it yet, but I was about to spend the next 12 hours suffering. The first problem was my rival, who challenged me on the way out of Azalea Town. His Pokemon were twice my level, and the only way to beat his Bayleaf was to fill my team with Zubats and spam Supersonic. Two hours and three resets later, I could move on to an even worse fight, Whitney. If you've played this game, you know that fighting Whitney and her Miltank sucks. I had a plan though. You see, spending all my money on balls just to catch a Pokemon that I can only use for like two battles? That's no good. What if I told you there was a way to catch Pokemon and get paid for doing it? That makes it sound like I'm trying to get you to join a pyramid scheme. No, I'm talking about the bug catching contest. Three days a week, this guy lets me borrow some great balls and catch a bug Pokemon. Obviously. For this, I'm given an award, which I can sell, and after <clears throat> waiting a few days, I can do it again. I enter Goldenrod with my morale low and pockets empty, but with a few Scythers and a lot of time travel, I've never been more prepared. You might be thinking, with all these strong Pokemon, how could I possibly lose? Rollout. Rollout is how I lost. Attempt after attempt. Every turn it doubles in power, and is super effective against bugs. I can survive the first hit though, so I'll just paralyze the Miltank to stop Rollout from getting stronger. I really need to not miss, I think this is a 75% accurate move. I missed. Um, I'll just paralyze the Miltank. Okay, it worked that time, but I forgot to mention what came before this. This might actually be one of the hardest iterations of this fight, without like, actually changing what her team is. Double Edge? Before I could even try to beat Miltank, I had to fight a Clefairy with Metronome, and its luck was insane. 
Aeroblast, Sacred Fire, Horn Drill. Again and again, it would KO too many of my Pokemon, so when the Miltake finally came out, well, let this serve as a reminder that I can't level up, so if I win, I lose. This is how I spent the next hour. Either I miss Stun Spore, 75% accurate by the way, and get swept by Rollout, or Clefairy rolls some broken move with Metronome and I have to stop attacking. Oh, and since I'm getting EXP from Clefairy, I have to go back to the bug catching contest every few attempts to catch more Scythers. Did I mention that Stun Spore is 75% accurate? I I'm gonna survive this. Barely. I use Stun Spore. It's funny! I'm laughing, don't you guys- don't you guys hear me laughing? Haha. -ha. You know, I've been stubbornly trying the same strategy over and over, and I keep getting so close, but I don't know. Maybe I'll add a Pidgey to my team and use Sand Attack? I should have tried that like an hour ago. And I'm mean, because I wanted to win one time. After four hours of losing to a goddamn cow. I'm the bad guy here. I know what you're thinking. That battle was still too easy. As long as I didn't misclick, there wasn't any real threat of leveling. Can we make this next gym a little harder? I bet we can get through at least some trainers. Do I have to fight all of them in this gym? Yeah. He has five Pokemon. That is a lot. Oh, this is gonna be so annoying. I have to switch to every single Pokemon in my party. Oh, this is so dangerous. There's no way the AI uses Curse twice, right? Oh no. No. Oh, I need to go- I need to lose this battle right now. If he had done that one turn sooner, Meowth would have leveled up. The AI is so dumb that I almost lost. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. Almost. Fuck! I'll be honest. At this moment right here, I thought the challenge was over. The only reason I'd gotten this far in the game is because I could carefully plan how many Pokemon to use in battle and only defeat Pokemon when I knew I wouldn't level up. But when a trainer's entire team knows moves that either stop me from switching or take themselves out and force me to level, that planning doesn't work. Also, this is the first trainer in the gym and everyone else's Pokemon can do the same thing. The only way to win is to have a full team of unused Pokemon so it's impossible to level when Ghastly uses Curse. But I can't afford to catch that many Pokemon. Well, I guess there's one place where I can catch Pokemon for free. One hour and 12 Scythers later, I went back into that gym with my swarm of bugs and beat trainer after trainer. And then I got too close to leveling up and left only to come back with even more Scythers. In a matter of minutes, Morty was the only one left. For this fight, I parted ways with my beautiful bugs and caught some Meowths for their ghost immunity. I paralyzed one of them so Gengar couldn't put me to sleep and use Dream Eater. And just like that, the fourth badge was not quite mine. Okay, Haunter is last. We still have a fully healthy Meowth waiting in the back. That was a misclick. Against the gym leader's very last Pokemon, I accidentally sent out this Meowth instead of one I hadn't used, and I get trapped with Mean Look. Okay, this isn't terrible. I'll just spam useless moves like Growl while I wait for the Haunter to kill me. Big mistake. If you look at this Haunter's moveset, it knows Spite, Mean Look, Mimic, and Nightshade. Three of these won't damage me and Mimic, well, I didn't know how Mimic works when I did this fight. I looked it up, and basically, you copy your opponent's last used move, and it takes the place of Mimic until the end of the battle. So if I wanted this Haunter to kill me, I should have been using Scratch so it would learn Scratch and attack me with it. But I was spamming Growl. And by the time someone in chat warned me, it was too late. Haunter mimicked Growl and had no way to attack me, unless it ran out of moves and started struggling. The thing is, Growl has 40 uses, so that was impossible. It was only a matter of time before I was forced to use Bite, defeat the Haunter, and level up. Wait, hang on, he's struggling. We're okay! Oh my god, we're okay! Fun fact about the internet. It can be wrong. Sometimes. And one of these times is right now. Remember how I said Haunter could use Growl 40 times? Well, according to Bulbapedia, that's how Mimic should work in this game. But in the games released after this, a Mimic move only has 5 uses. Except, that's not right. I went back to check the footage of this battle, and sure enough, Haunter used Growl 5 times before using Struggle. Meaning the website I had treated as fact this entire run was wrong at the best possible time. Instead of resetting hours of progress, I could beat Morty with no leveling and finally save the game. 16 hours in, and I'm halfway done. Hey, remember like 5 seconds ago when Bulbapedia was wrong? Well, immediately after this battle, I found another error. Except, instead of saving me from resetting, it might have made this challenge impossible. Let me explain. 
After getting the 4th badge, you can use Surf outside of battle, which is great, because the Pokemon you encounter while surfing can be really strong. Like, level 40. At least according to Bulbapedia. When I went to catch these level 40 tentacles, I learned their actual highest level was a lot lower. This isn't much of a problem for now, but the thing is, my plan for beating the game heavily relied on catching level 40 tentacles. And here I am, halfway through the challenge, realizing that I can't catch anything close to that. The next couple of gyms were pretty easy, since I could just spam surf and win, but with the end of the game rapidly approaching, I still had no plan for the Pokemon League. I did the math, and the EXP I'd get from fighting the Elite Four and Champion was more than enough to force any possible team to level up. The only way to win was to defeat Pokemon without gaining any experience. I guess that's possible, I just need a move that damages my opponent and makes me faint. Something like self-destruct. Wait, doesn't Electrode learn that? So, please chill. Self-destruct is exactly what I need to beat this challenge, but catching something that knows it is a little risky. After beating the Rocket Hideout again though, I caught an Electrode and could try this new move out. I walked into the 7th gym with my grenade and did what anyone would do. I blew up his Pokemon into a million tiny pieces. The rest of the battle was a breeze. That was with just one grenade, too. I needed more explosives. I crossed the ice path and found a minefield south of Blackthorn. It may look like regular tall grass, but make one wrong step and boom. It took a while, but I got five grapplers, turning my team into a certified arsenal. So, with enough firepower to blow up a small city, I spent the next three hours exploding. Like, that's all I did. Team Rocket, my rival. Well, I did have to turn my brain on for his Meganium, but that was over pretty quickly, so I could turn it off again and go do the final gym. Some people might think that spamming self-destruct is cheesy or anticlimactic. To that, I say, yeah, you're absolutely right. And you'll be delighted to learn that once I got to Claire, this immediately stopped working. My explosive strategy might have seemed foolproof, but believe it or not, there were flaws. The main one being, Graveler sucks. It's slower than everything, and any decent special attack will one-shot me before I can blow up, so these guys can't do anything to Claire's team. Fortunately, about 10 steps from where I caught those Gravelers, I found the perfect answer, Wabafet. Instead of primitive explosions, Wabafet uses sophisticated dark magic, so when it faints, it takes the other Pokemon down too. No experience gained. The best part? Wabafet is insanely bulky, so even though I'm 15 levels lower, it's a simple matter of survive a hit, destiny bonds, and wow, that might have been the easiest gym. But gyms aren't what I'm worried about. The true challenge is the Pokemon League. 5 trainers, 26 Pokemon, and no leveling. For this, I had the choice of sticking with my Wabafets or catching level 40 Gravelers and Victory Road. Obviously, beating the game with level 25s is hilarious, so I'll stick with these. To deal with stronger Pokemon, I caught Suicune in the tower and then used my Master Ball on Raikou. So here's my team. I am painfully underleveled, but it's not all bad. By this point, I'd found a way to make infinite money, so after hours of grinding and a little extra, I had way too many healing items. Like, more than I would ever need. But like, my whole strategy relies on dying, so I'm not gonna run out of revives. Without any real game plan, I started the battles. Destiny bonded all of Will's Pokemon, and then uh... Coco swept me with muck. That's fine, that was a practice run. Now onto the real attempt. I beat Will again and used Icy Wind on muck so Wabafet could outspeed and Destiny Bond, and then cleaned up with the legendaries. I was trying to conserve them for later, but the Wabafets kept running out of Destiny Bonds and then dying, so yeah, things weren't going great. Bruno was a little easier though. His Machamp flinched me with Rock Slide so I couldn't use Destiny Bond, but that only happened once, and after that, it was Destiny Bond for everything except for Metacham, where I used Mirror Coat. Karen was the battle I was most afraid of. Almost everything had a super effective move for Wabafet, but that's not the scary part. Her Murkrow knows Whirlwind, a move that randomly switches one of my Pokemon into battle. Some of my Wabafets are close to leveling, so if Whirlwind drives them out, I'm in danger. Like I said before, winning these battles takes meticulous planning and Whirlwind is impossible to plan around. I need to defeat Murkrow with Raikou as fast as possible before any of that can happen. Here's the problem. After I defeat something with Destiny Bond, I have no idea what's coming next. There's no message that says, Karen is about to send in Murkrow, would you like to switch? Instead, I have to guess when Murkrow comes out, and big surprise, I guessed wrong. Okay, I kinda wish this was coming out later. Please do not whirlwind me. This'll do a lot, I think I should barely survive though. 
Okay, never mind. Phew. Okay. I got Raikou on the field and hit Murkrow with Thunder. That is a huge relief. With that out of the way, I could Surf Houndoom and Destiny Bond everything else. And just like that, the Elite Four is done. All that's left is the champion. Let's just give Lance a try. We're starting with Wobbuffet. It is actually holding a Quick Cloud this time. Best case scenario, first turn, we either go first and get taken out, or he uses Hyper Beam. Okay, he's used Hyper Beam. He has to recharge, so I can use Destiny Bond 100% for free. And now I get hit by Hyper Beam again, and I die, but so does Gyarados. This Dragonite, the most damage he can do to my Rykro is another Hyper Beam. He Thunder Waves. That just lets us revive more of our Pokemon. All right, now we have all of our Wobbuffets healthy, and we can just do the same thing again. Hyper Beam, we die. Destiny Bond, perfect. We are going to take out Dragonite after Dragonite with a bunch of level 25 Wobbuffets. That is how this battle is going to go. I should not be making this look so easy. This is the third and final Dragonite. This guy knows Outrage. It can definitely Oko my Wobbuffets, and he doesn't have to recharge. I'm not exactly sure how, how I want to play this. Oh, Hyper Beam? Huh. That was really stupid on his part. If he used Outrage, he would have killed me, and I would have been in a really... Fuck. I'm out of Destiny Bonds. I should probably heal Suicune to full. He uses Outrage. I think Suicune should survive one. We just need Blizzard to hit. I could have taken another one of those. Wow. Suicune is so good. Sea Trash is in a game sent me XP too, but we don't level up. And he has Charizard and Aerodactyl left. Forgot he had Charizard? Yeah, he's the flying type trainer. He has flying types such as Charizard, Aerodactyl, Gyarados, and Dragonite. Okay, please Hyper Beam me. Flamethrower? Ah, that's annoying. I feel like I can survive a, a uh, Flamethrower. I want to say I survived with the Sliver, but every time I've thought that, I've actually died. So, yeah, maybe not. Hyper Beam! Yes! That is perfect! Now we send out B, who has more Destiny Bonds. And Charizard must recharge. Fell right into my trap. Okay, we have two Wobbuffets left. He used Hyper Beam. June took down the Aerodactyl with Destiny Bond. Wait, hang on. Did I have another Pokemon? I wasn't paying attention. Oh my god. We'll do it again. No worries. We're back at Lance. So what are we going to do this time? Everyone say it with me. We are going to make sure I have one Pokemon left when I use Destiny Bond. That is somehow a mistake that I have never made in this challenge up until the last Pokemon of the last battle. Dolphin uses Destiny Bond. Charizard takes itself out. This time, I have three more Pokemon alive. Enemy Charizard faints and Champion Lance was defeated. And I have finally proven that Pokemon does not actually require you to be a trainer. Wednesday, we are playing Pokemon Fire Red, but every Pokemon that I face has Intimidate, Wonder Guard, Huge Power, Synchronize, and Speed Boost in addition to their normal ability. And I'm also going to be adding more abilities to that list as the stream goes on. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.